So now that we've finished modeling the gap spline, we can change the rotation of the reference image back to zero. And I'm going to select the spline, switch to model mode. And in order to be able to rotate this into position, I'm going to move the object axis to the center of the Cinema 4D grid. So let's switch on enable axis and put the object axis to zero on the grid. And now we can rotate the spline and we need to rotate it 22.5 degrees. And again, I'm going to switch on enable axis and reset the rotation of the axis to zero here. Now let's make a copy of this spline and rotate the copy minus 180 degrees. And I'm going to select both of these splines and turn them into a single spline. And next I'm going to use a cloner object to create the other copies. The cloner object needs to be changed to radial and we don't need any radius here for the cloner object because the object axis of our spline is at the center of the Cinema 4D grid. So I'm going to change that to zero and we only need four copies. Like the symmetry object, the cloner cannot be used inside a spline mask object. However, we can make it editable without converting the splines. So let's hit C on the keyboard to make the cloner object editable. And now we can select the four spline copies and combine these into a single spline. And next I'm going to add a spline mask object and let's drag the circle and the gap spline in there. And in order to create the gaps in between the puzzle pieces, all we have to do now is change the mode of the spline mask object from union to A subtract B. And I'm going to make the spline mask object editable. And let's put this in the extrude object. We can delete this cloner null object here. And if I switch the extrude object on and render this, you can see that we have uh, created nice and even gaps, the shapes are consistent, and the puzzle pieces fit together perfectly. In the next video, we're going to add the openings to this puzzle piece here.